Termin audio art jest właściwie terminem ulotnym, nieuchwytnym. Próba definicji tego zjawiska w zasadzie jest prawie niemożliwa, ale są pewne elementy, które wyróżniają działania, które określamy mianem audio art i które łączą te działania w jedną całość. Festiwal Audio Art, pierwszy festiwal tego typu w Polsce, był próbą y, uchwycenia tego zjawiska kulturowego bardziej niż ustalenia y, formuły, y, tej formuły sztuki. Ten termin się pojawił pierwszy raz w latach 60. w, w obrębie y, kultury y, amerykańskiej, a ściśle w obrębie awangardowych działań grupy Fluxus z Johnem Cage'em i Nam Yun Paikiem i wtedy on oznaczał nową formułę dźwięku, dźwięku jako y, źródła wynikającego z określonego przedmiotu, z określonego obiektu dźwiękowego, a nie dźwięku, który jest y, y, abstrakcyjny i związany y, z historią muzyki, z muzyką, jako taką. I, I to właściwie było jedyne, co w latach 60. było istotne dla audio art. Po 20-30 latach ta formuła się bardzo zmieniła. W latach 70. tymi działaniami głównie zajmowali się artyści związani ze sztukami wizualnymi. I pod koniec lat 70., na początku lat 80., pojawiła się jakby próba ujednolicenia tego zjawiska i połączenia go w nową całość z dotychczasowymi awangardowe, awangardowymi działaniami w muzyce. A więc powstało zjawisko, które ja bym określił jako nowa wersja sztuki synkretycznej, czyli czegoś, co było odwiecznym marzeniem ludzkości, a mianowicie łączenia tańca, muzyki, śpiewu, w jedną całość. To, co, to, czym w renesansie stała się opera, też była próbą połączenia kilku sztuk w, w jedną całość. I tym jest w tej chwili audio art. Dla mnie jest to, jest to nowa formuła, która w sposób holistyczny, czyli pełny, całościowy, próbuje y, tworzyć y, sztukę, w która korzysta z wszelkich możliwych dostępnych elementów. To jest też bardzo typowe dla audio art, że korzysta ono bez ograniczeń z wszelkich przedmiotów, które mogą stać się instrumentami. Mówię specjalnie w tym trybie, że mogą stać się instrumentami, ponieważ nie muszą. One mogą często tylko posłużyć jako część instalacji wizualnej po to, żeby, żeby inna część tej instalacji grała. I to jest też bardzo ważne, żeby, żeby na działania audio art patrzeć w sposób jak najbardziej szeroki, nie próbować tylko y, odbierać y, tego, co jest w dźwiękach, bo w większości wypadków ta sztuka działa na kilku poziomach, więc zarówno sztuką wizualną, jak i sztuką dźwiękową. I to, co jest szalenie ważne, co na przykład odróżnia to od, od działań teatralnych, że te dwa czy więcej elementów, one powstają równocześnie. To nie jest tak, że muzyka dochodzi do tego, co jest wizualne, do tego, co jest, co jest scenografią, tylko powstaje równocześnie jako, jako jedna y, y, spójna całość.
idea what this was was an example if we want should we start now or you want me to go back and start that again okay so this was an example of a of a, my radio sonata and what's blasphemous about it is it was actually my piano sonata that I wrote as 1975 and now I've sort of redesigned it to play on this electronic instrument and redesign the timbres the point is that it's a um, that what I have in front of me is a set of radio antennas. And in my hands are two radio transmitters. As the transmitter gets closer to the antenna, it, it sends a message to the personal computer behind me, the IBM in this case. And that message is to play a beat or change a timbre or effect control. It's completely up to me how each of the sticks is interpreted in um, X, Y, or Z. And so, essentially, let's see. Oh, yeah. 
Um, you can use this then to conduct virtually any piece of music. Let's see. Okay. Can, you can essentially place beats in any piece of music now and conduct it and perform it. Now, there are some new challenges. This is a new kind of performance, a new kind of virtuosity. What is virtuosity when you have a machine that lets you, with the wave of a hand, conduct a symphony orchestra like the conductor? What a powerful instrument. Maybe conducting isn't the only way to work with this instrument. Um, perhaps. Let's see. Perhaps we should, we could instead just improvise with the instrument. So instead, there's no score in the computer now. It's just measuring the signals, and low signals play low notes, and high signals play high notes. Therefore, I feel at last we have the instrument for the composer. This is the composer's instrument. The computer is the composer's instrument. And uh, the amazing thing about the computer is it changes its form. Depending on what software you put in it, it becomes a new thing, a new beast. So it's an instrument like we've never had before. But it is the instrument of our generation. Any composer who isn't working with a computer has missed the boat. Technology is very fundamental to art. I think all good art is technological. And if it's not technological, it is no novelty. If it doesn't bring anything new, it's just not relevant as a contribution to the development of mankind. I know this may sound very pretentious, but I will to explain what I, what I mean. I mean, it is very important for people, in order, as a fundamental basis for democracy, that people are capable of expressing themselves. Now, to express yourself, you need tools. You need language, you need development tools of using that language. You need material tools if, as much as possible to do it. Not only language, however, because what, the reason why I'm, I am a musician is because I feel very well the limits of language. Language, language is made to 
name things in the world so that we can share them in a society, whereas music has no language. It does not, the signs that music, the forms that it uses, do not refer to the outer world, but to inner states of mind. Now, the inner states of mind are determined by the circumstances in which I live, by the kind of society in which I live. This society is always progressing and always changing. Hence, the tools we use for expressing ourselves non-verbally have to be developed all the time and steadily revised as well. So I think it's in the nature of things that new composers nowadays develop new tools for their expressive behavior. I think that's the basis of their contribution to a culture. So without that, you are reactionary. have the idea that people are like a little afraid of all these experiments and they look for certainty at a certain moment again and for the moment it's uh, something you can see in all the arts also in music and uh, in architecture in uh, the visual arts uh, going back to what they call postmodernism and in a sense when you uh, analyze modernism and postmodernism modernism was a reaction towards the values that were set too much, towards too much uh, certainty, uh, beauty and these things. And all of a sudden in postmodernism, they start to take elements from different styles, mingle them together and do as if they found something new whilst they are going back towards the aspects as beauty. They want to have a feeling of being at their ease. They want to listen over and over again to the same music and want to feel comfortable. And they don't like anymore to have this confrontation with things that gives them a bit of anxiety, that raise questions. And uh, it's a small group that still is going on, but a very important group internationally spread everywhere. You come in every country and there is a group of people uh, like here in Poland too, like Marek Kolonievski, who is really wanting to change that aspect of anxiety that is growing more and more and he wants to develop uh, the awareness of uh, the risk that we have to take we always have to put these certainties into questionings and try to still go on and novelty remains for that group of people one of the most important values that is there and it's only through mod uh, novelties that you can uh, find creativity. You have to always try to find new questions and sometimes you find also new answers. To postmodernism, I think, really, in the musical level, you see what that means. It just means, okay, let's go back to old values, let's go back to tonality, let's go back to, uh, well, ma writing masses, etc. You have very great examples in Poland. People like composers like Goretzky is a typical example of a, of a, of a postmodernist, yet it makes it sells very well. But the fact that it sells and it's so popular 
also means that it must be, there must be some problem with it. That's the problem with it. That's why it's not refreshing, why it's not bringing anything new. See, that's the problem for me. The moment it sells, the moment it's profitable, then there's a problem? Well, I think if art is not a problem, it's just not good art. It's not interesting for me. I mean, I don't do art as a form of personal masturbation. That's not my problem with art. That's not why I do all this effort in trying to do something. something. I think novelty is an essential characteristic of art. And if postmodernist claims that the, that the idea of having to do something novel in a piece of art is old-fashioned, then this is a pure lie. This is manipulation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 